G'day Budgies and Widgies and welcome back to the channel. Last week I had one of the amazing opportunities of meeting a long-term aquarium idol of mine, Eric Bodrock. Eric is a US-based aquarium hobbyist and I first encountered him on the Aquarium Co-op channel about seven years ago. Not only did I fall in love with the collection of fish that he keeps, but also more so, also more so, but more so the way that he fundamentally keeps aquariums. One of his mottos, be the fish, is something that I've implemented in the way that I keep aquariums and a especially after I met him last week, is something that is constantly playing in the back of my mind as I'm preparing for the new fish room. So Eric and his wife Regina had flown down from the States to Australia, and my opportunity to meet him actually came up through the Aquarium Society of Victoria. You might remember that name because a couple of videos ago I attended an aquarium auction that was hosted by the Aquarium Society of Victoria. Now Eric was actually able to provide a very very amazing talk about Corydoras, which is one of his biggest specialties of aquarium keeping. And I was able to attend that talk and film a couple of snippets of it, and I want to take you on that journey today. So enough talking here, let's get on the train and get to the Aquarium Society of Victoria. Alright, I'm on my way to the Aquarium Society of Victoria because we've got the talk happening. I'm not driving there this time, I'm actually going by public transport because it's actually quicker than driving there. Uh, also, it's cheaper and uh, it's just more convenient. Plus, the, tr the station is like a minute away from the actual event place, so we'll get on the train and touch base again. Alright, we have successfully boarded the train, so now it is like a 30 minute train ride all the way to Flinders Street Station. From Flinders Street we need to get on a train to Clifton Hill and then it's like a 400 meter walk so we are on track, we are on time. I am so excited for this event. The fact that the Aquarium Society of Victoria actually have a building makes it seem like it's out of Hogwarts or something. This is so cool, an aquarium club has their own building. This might not really seem like a big deal, uh, but in Australia, this is the first time I've seen it. Okay, so there is like a little trading table over here. So I am very keen to see what's here because there are some awesome collections of fish and shrimp. This is the, the stock list, I guess. Oh, there's some wild betters. Oh, crazy. Hmm, that's dangerous. That I did not, uh, that I did not expect. And some red hooks as well. All right, let's have a look. This is actually quite dangerous because I did not intend on getting any fish today. <laughs> but I will. <laughs> oh, there's some fish that I have been wanting for a long time, like these. These are prey cocks. Where are the luminatus gone? Here they are. Yep. No, that's another bag of Procox. Where'd the Luminatus go? I literally just picked up the bag of Luminatus. Where did they disappear? Oh, here they are. <laughs> Beautiful trio. Those are cherry barbs. Rio Nines. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think I know a fish that I will get. Ah, damn it. <laughs> okay, we might be, we might be taking those bags of angels. What have we got here? That is Lacustris. Okay, Lacustris. What's this? Desert gobies. Okay, desert gobies. More desert gobies. More Lacustris. Yes, please. Yes, please. No All right, so the lacustris and the uh, and the angelfish. All right, cool. That's it. Do you know if this will be all the fish for the night, or is there still more? Um, there still might be more. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Ah, even more dangerous. <laughs> Beautiful. Whoa, that's cool. Except all my fish eat plants, so no plants. Yeah. Um, I will grab the red root floater bag, and then. Mm, should I try my luck again with frog bit? Uh, You're at 55. Yeah, I think I'll, yeah, I'll just stay with the red root floaters. Yep, um, would cool. you do cash or card? 
Could I do card, please? It hasn't even been five minutes and we're already down $55 worth of fish that I did not intend on getting either. So before I left, I told my mum that I would not be buying any new fish because the house move is coming up and I was expecting some fish to be sold at the uh, at the event. I was just thinking, oh, you know, it'd be some shrimp and some brisinose plecos, maybe some live bearers. No, they of course had to have just like the most amazing collection of rare and wonderful fish. A box full of different species of wild bedders and another box full of different rainbows and Australian natives and some really cool South American fish and uh, yeah, the temptation got a little bit too high. Especially because I accepted card, like I didn't have the, the drawback of going to an ATM and withdrawing cash. So I was like, yeah, there's no real limitations, is there? We'll talk about the fish that I purchased after we finish the uh, aspects of the talk that Eric did, but let's continue on with what happened at the event. We're not far at all from starting and people are really starting to come in. It's going to be so awesome. There's still more boxes of fish, so there is a chance that I might go home with more fish than I intended to, but I'm not trying to go crazy, just fish I've wanted for a little while and stuff here is like always a fantastic price, so worth it. So by around 7.30, this room was packed. There was probably around 50 people there and they had come from all over the city. There were people that were like two hours away, half an hour away, 10 minutes away. It was really, really cool. My journey was about an hour and a bit, just under an hour actually. Yeah, the train was, the train was pretty quick, but we were all waiting for the star of the show, Eric, who was actually already there walking around and talking to people. I was a little nervous, so I just sort of hung around in the corner and I was just chilling with Blake from Blake's Aquatics. Actually, let me show you when I ambushed him. I'm gonna ambush him whilst he's looking at plants. Hello, Blake. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you buying? Plants. <laughs> And then the talk started. Eric got onto the stage and the personality of this man is just absolutely infectious. He's got so much energy and just so much passion for everything that he does. Actually, enough about me explaining it. Have a look yourself. I've said that they can't hear me that fast as I talk. So, um, interrupt me. Throw your hand up or just yell, shout, scream, holler, whatever. Um, the, the idea of having you talk and ask questions takes my talk to a little bit different directions and makes it different every time. There's several videos of me out there already. The, the core information is always the same, it doesn't change. But it's the questions that you guys ask that takes me into different uh, topics or a little bit more in depth than hatching eggs or whatever, or diet or whatever. So please ask questions. Because I talk quick, you're gonna say, I'm gonna ask him about that later. And then there's gonna be another question that's gonna come up a few minutes. I gotta ask him about that too. You're gonna forget the questions. So blurt it out, I'll answer them quick. Uh, also through my talks, you're gonna see, I'll, if I show pictures of a fish, Corey, obviously, in the corner there's gonna be a, um, some data information. It's gonna be temperature, pH, uh, TDS. Those are the conditions that when, they, when I spawned that fish, that's when I found eggs. So I may not hit on that, but if you're getting, in addition to what I'm saying, you can see that and, and get some other information if you're working with those fish. They're the small cousins of corridors, very active, fast moving, always out, great for nano tanks, kind of the perfect uh, fish for, you know, for everybody. You know, they're, they're, like I said, they're, they, they fill all the blocks on the form with the activity and everything. And then you have scleromystacs, which are the, the big guys, real elaborate pectoral fins on them. They can get a little bit aggressive with one another. Uh, the Scleromystics Barbatus is probably the more commonly seen ones. But there's, if, you're, if you like blotched, if you like the colors of them, uh, something new like the Corridors Hyphestus, uh, there's, there's, there's a whole variety of quarries out there. So something for everybody. The Pygmaeus stay small. There, you're looking at a fish that um, maybe a, a big female might hit two centimeters, but it's usually under that. And a, and a, female, a male's gonna be at a centimeter and a half at best. So something for everybody. Some of the new things that are coming in the hobby right now, this guy up here, this is uh, Corridorus Rickbaxta. Uh, it's a new one. They're starting to breed them out in Germany. They travel poorly. They're very expensive. Uh, US dollars, uh, our bunnies are worth uh, uh, about 30% more than the, uh, the Australian dollar. But those are selling for about $250 a piece, Jeez. the Rickbaxta. The uh, Corridorus uh, CW111, 
Uh, a lot of people are calling that the holy grail in the corridors world. As you can see, it's a beautiful fish. These fish, when they start, when they're ready to breed, the males will start getting extended uh, dorsal fins and pectoral fins. But a beautiful fish, and these are still bringing $250 uh, in the market in the U.S. And then the new one here also is Ifestus. That hit the U.S. market about two and a half years ago at $800 a fish. Uh, they've since now dropped about the same price range as the zebras at $250. But uh, just some of the new stuff, and kind of bizarre, you know, with color patterns and, you know, this black mask on them and everything. I have these two, and both of these are spawning for me now. So I'm um, working. Now, the only reason that I didn't record the entire talk is because it actually already has been recorded. The full talk from start to finish is recorded, and I believe that it is being edited, and it will be uploaded to the Aquarium Society of Victoria's YouTube channel, and it will also be posted on their Facebook page. All of those details will be in the description down below. By the time that I release this video, if the uh, talk is already out published, I will include it in the description down below, but you can also just keep an eye out on this video's description to see if I add the link later, or of course, you can just follow the Facebook page, which is probably a little bit easier. But again, all the details are down below. Now, Eric throughout the talk was just dropping just bombshell after bombshell of amazing, mind-blowing and practical information. Like, just repeatedly, I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. It was just so much fun because um, Eric and his wife Regina, who are both passionate aquarium hobbyists, like, how cool is that your husband and your wife are aquarium keepers? Like, not your husband. Like, you know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, so <laughs> they're both aquarium keepers, and they both have their own passions and a combined passion. One can only dream stuff like that would happen one day. But um, uh, they have the privilege of going down to South America, collecting fish from the wild, and bringing them back home. Unfortunately, that can't really happen in Australia unless I was going to go through a whole bunch of complex processes of finding a transshipper and making sure it's on the import list. We've got some pretty hectic laws, but because of that, they're able to see how these fish live in the wild and how they can implement these things in their home aquarium. Some of those things about how aquatic environments fluctuate in the wild, like when um, these catfish or corridors that live in particularly shallow water or uh, often locked in bodies of water go through droughts, severe rains, parameter swings, temperature swings. Like when you factor in all of those things, you really see how much is different from the wild to your aquariums. And, and after that, Eric was explaining how different types of quarries breed in different ways. How some scatter eggs on the glass, some will go on the underside of leaves, some need like a really dense, thick leaf litter, and the way that he has his spawning set up. A lot of really cool information, and I was honestly thinking that there might be some super complex and, you know, high intensity things that he has to do when it comes to triggering certain fish to spawn. But a lot of it is just super fundamental replication of the wild things that he does. Occasionally putting fish through a drought period where they're almost going through a bit of humane torture. They're not really getting too many water changes. The temperature is pretty stable or goes a little high or goes a little low. And you're just trying to replicate certain things that these fish would go through in the wild. Because at the end of the day, although they might be three, four, five, ten generations bred in captivity, they're still going to have a lot of those instinctual wild behaviors that are then going to translate into the aquarium when you do those certain things. And it's going to trigger that spawn or get those fish acting a certain way. And it's stuff that actually does really make sense. And um, all of those sorts of things was really almost uh, nice to hear because it's quite simple. Anyone can do it as long as they've got the passion and the dedication, which Eric and Regina absolutely have. And so after the talk finished, I had the chance to run up to Eric and say, Eric, thank you so much for the talk. I've been a long time follower and just exchange uh, some greetings. And Eric immediately was just right on top of it. He was like, oh, pleasure to meet you. And he was just super nice and super humble. And we just spent time talking about stuff that he does and stuff I do in my tanks. And, and it was just really, really cool. I ended up getting a photo with him photos with him and he said to reach out and send them to him and I didn't actually tell him that I make these sorts of videos but I'm sure he'd enjoy it nevertheless so very very happy that I got to meet him and now let's look at the fish that I uh, should not have but definitely wanted to 
So if you follow the channel regularly, you'll know that this is my baby Australian lungfish grow out aquarium. Also, I call it. I promise to you there are two baby Australian lungfish growing out in this tank, but will you see them throughout the duration of this video? Absolutely not, because they hide all the time, but I will promise to put up some footage if I can just record these fish coming out for a little bit. However, it's probably more fitting to call this my rainbow fish aquarium now, because there are four different species of rainbow fish all that I've got from the Aquarium Society of Victoria auction, or recently the trading table. Now, the awesome group of lacustrous rainbows, so six lacustrous rainbows have gone in here, along with a non-native or rainbow fish species. I've also put the Rio Nene angelfish in this aquarium as well. I've always wanted a group of true wild type angelfish. Whilst we can pretty commonly get Manacaparu angels in Australia, I'm not really too sure about the lineage of them, whether they're F1s or they have had some sort of, you know, common domestic gene bred into them. So I just, yeah, I don't know. They're pretty common and I was like, surely there might have been something fishy that happened with the DNA or the, the lineage of these fish down the line. But seeing that these were F1 uh, Rio Nene angelfish, I was like, yeah, absolutely got to get them. And four angels for $20 as well. Absolutely, I am not missing out on that deal. And also with these lacustrous rainbows, they look so stunning, even at a small size in the bag. I knew that I had to have them. They're now in here, they are super, doing just super amazing. And I really just love the mix of rainbows that are in this aquarium. And it's really started up this new collectoritis and love for rainbow fish, Australian, Papua New Guinea, or Indonesian, wherever they're from, I love them. They have amazing body shape, amazing coloration, and just such amazing activity. And I'm glad that I uh, were able to get these fish on the same day that I met Eric. And it's a really cool memory to to hold as a testament, you know, seeing these fish swimming around in this tank. So very, very happy with them. And if you want to see more videos like this, if you want to see the update on these fish and how they're progressing, or see more vloggy style videos where I'm actually out and about traveling and meeting new people and filming different content, feel free to let me know in the description down below. If there's anything that you particularly liked about this video or if there's any videos you would like me to do in the future, feel free to let me know as well. If you did end up enjoying this video, give it a thumbs up and you have the option to subscribe to the channel as well, which helps so much with the growth of my videos. But aside from that, bodges and wedgies, thank you so much for all of your support and as always, Stay happy, stay safe, stay Aussie Australian, Bodgy out.